I got a lot of shit to say. Oh no, <laughs> you've been holding it in. I don't like this new mic of yours. You know Why? Because it, it's better than yours? It sounds louder than mine. <laughs> it is. It's fucking, I have to turn it down or it blows my eardrums. <laughs> and also, you're doing the, here's what pisses me off the most. This entire time you had a worse mic and you sat back further from it. Now you got a better mic and you're crowding the mic. I can tell. I, I mean, okay. This is me crowding the mic. This okay. is me sitting normally, like how usually. Okay, what people might be noticing here also is that you are cutting out a lot, and I thought this would be fixed. Really, it was just my old mic. I had to. I actually had to go and lips just, on it. I hope. I don't know if it's just me on my end. Um, for so people in the chat, let me know if uh, I'm the one that's fucked up. Hmm. Um, okay, so. Here's a couple of things we have to get started here. First, uh, some people might be wondering why we started a little bit late here. Um, and it's because of Judas. And I'm just going to use this to commemorate. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Um, Shit. This is to commemorate. This is you. <laughs> Look at the eyes. <laughs> Look at the fucking eyes. This is fucking you, buddy. Damn. I, mean, I keep forgetting we got a whole audio version of this that people might be listening to the audio version. So for the folks at home, uh, what you're seeing is an image uh, that says very loser, very uh, dumb. Yes. To the right is like a robot's idea of what Michael Sarah is. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Good. Good call. Uh, like a handsomer Michael Sarah, which. Yeah. You know what? You know what's interesting? Like the way it does ears. Everyone talks about fingers, but people don't talk about like the ears on AI generated images. Yeah. Um, and also, this is here's what I don't like about this when we talk about AI and where it's going. We're gonna lose all this stuff down here at the bottom where it's just it's gibberish. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it, like okay for the folks that says coming oozer with cello. <laughs> Like it's just there, there's a charm to that like early vintage CGI that we're we're gonna look back on this and like make a fake simulacra yeah. of it later. I even on. like how the drop shadow on the the letter U in dumb is just a little thicker than all the other letters. Like it it's a little bit fucked <laughs> yeah. up. Like, it almost like it's little inconsistencies like that that make it seem handmade. Yeah. It's idiosyncratic. That's what's so we're gonna be looking back on this like <laughs> vinyl. Like you remember all the the imperfections give it a certain warmth. 
on like and because technology is advancing at such a fast clip that's gonna be in like a year yeah when we're like creating ourselves that's be Easter, you know yeah. <laughs> yeah okay so moving on i know we got i got a couple things to talk about before i get to the main thing um so prior to um logging on i was in a bit of a fracas with your literal wife. Oh, really? And I need you to li- need you to litigate this. I don't know hey, if she told are you. you. Fighting I... with dimes? What? No. Are you fight. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how fast she said no. She knows what I'm talking about. <clears throat> All right. So basically, um, she there was a miscommunication which resulted in her being wrong. But um, <laughs> here's a, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. This is the poster. What I'm showing on screen is the poster for the new Napoleon film, which a lot of people I know are seeing, but I have no interest to see. Um, we'll see when it uh, gets on torrents or something. But um, so this Napoleon right here on her neck, it's Josephine, and she's got Napoleon written on her neck in some type of marker, almost like in a punk rock sort of way. Um, now, does that look Photoshop to you? The Napoleon. Yeah, of course. It's extremely Photoshop. like it doesn't because I was thinking, yeah, it. Thank you, and that bothered me. Um, the, the miscommunication was your wife, Bob, had assumed that I because what I had said was it would be good if they actually wrote Napoleon on her skin in marker and Photoshop that or photograph that, and she thought I meant like almost like write it on the poster itself, <laughs> and then. <laughs> Again, a, a, a woman event. <laughs> uh, oh shit! I haven't even tested the soundboard. Okay, let's 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 get it going here. Let's make sure we got going. Do you hear that? Yep. Okay, the China Gong. <laughs> okay. Fuck you, Judas. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's try this. One. Okay, good. that's that's a classic. We're banging on all cylinders. Okay, so th- that's what bothered me. What do you think about the Napoleon movie, by the way, from two people who haven't seen it? I don't. I just don't care. I don't really watch movies, so I never see anything in theaters unless it's uh, gay. So. Unless <laughs> you only see something in the theaters if well, it is I gay. And somebody takes me, which is usually my family, so it's usually like a Marvel movie is when I'll go to the theaters. But. Okay, because there's so many paths we could have gone off that. Like, oh, when a man takes you to see it. When I go with my boyfriend, yeah. Fucking Christ. Yeah, when you go see Napoleon with a man. Mm-hmm. Okay, should have had something. What do, I, what do I got here? Oh, here we go. Hey, hey, nice. Hey. Mm-hmm. I deserve That's that. That's for I you. That. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, this good. I think John Talley was saying that that's the perfect nose on a woman. What do you think about that? And up almost a who knows. It's, yeah. Well, I don't, the thing is, is it's in profile. You can never tell from profile because some of these women with, and it's a good profile, but then you turn her and you look her head on and she's got like, um, yeah. like the dog, like the Borzoi dog face. Like the, it's, it's all bridge and there's no width. I don't know how to describe that, but yeah, some it's a, and what's the word, the neo neoteny where they look like children. But again, they don't. Those women don't age that well either. So I've never heard of that. What is that ne- word? Neo not. Ne- sorry, not neo not. Now I always forget what it's called. That sounds neo- like an AI it's, generated I think it's word. It's called neoteny. N e o t o n y. But it's the tendency for women to look like children, so that we don't just hit them all the time because we love uh, kids. Wow. You know what? Like that seems like one of those theories that we just came up with in the 20th century, because <laughs> I remember we had a friend. A Romanian girl who went to University of Toronto, and she, uh, we were friends back in our late teens, early twenties, and she kind of transitioned over to being sort of what we, at the time was called an extreme feminist or social justice warrior, and she was learning all kinds of kooky things in her University of Toronto classes, and one of them, she came to me, been presented this because it's a cool thing she just learned and it was like one theory i heard about today is that the reason women are smaller than men is because historically men ate first and that means that women didn't have as much to eat at dinner and that's why they're smaller and i remember even at the time even when i was at my fucking trashiest and dumbest i said i, I know i'm like huh that's interesting but that doesn't make any fucking sense that yeah. doesn't make sense to a retard yeah which i was 
That almost sounds like, yeah, women look like kids, so we don't hit them. Also, I bet that a liberal came up with that theory, and the implication there is that men just want to hit women, that they had to evolve their way out of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a thing. All right, so I, I got another thing. Oh, let's, let's get to a couple of chats. I want to show my own chat here. Uh, this is true. This is live-breaking thing I said. Old Glory Club... Uh, Pony Express Radio uh, took the nasty decision to stream at the same time as us. It's I'm not, I won't forget this nastiness. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, Dimes. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, here's here's Minoan, friend of the show, Minoan. You guys started before Old Glory Club, so we win. They'll have to wait. Sorry. Nice. S sorry, Americans. <laughs> Sorry, Israel's <laughs> best friend. And and CA says, my kingdom for a mid. Censor to non. Uh, you know, our, my, my, my censor to non. Our censor to non. My kingdom for a mid. In a sense, that is what Napoleon's about, isn't it? Like the true story or the film? I assume you mean the film. I, I guess the film. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that you know, Ridley Scott decided to. He, Ridley Scott is one of the last auteur directors, so he's he's got a singular voice, and sometimes that works very very well. Ridley Scott has made some amazing films, and he's made some awful films. And most of the time, when people don't like his movies, it's not because they're directed poorly. It's not that they're even acted poorly usually, or, or there's no technical decisions that he decided. One of his broad stroke ideas that he does just doesn't land. A broad stroke idea would be like, oh, let's let Jared Leto come up with a funny accent for House of Gucci. Let's just let him go. That's like an idea he came up with. Or like Prometheus. That's a movie that has a lot of good big ideas and a lot of bad big ideas. And like that's where he fails. But it's not in stuff like CGI usually. So his big idea for Napoleon was, oh, this is going to be kind of like a Weird punk rock love story. That's what it seems like to me with the focus on Josephine. That's my vibe. Again, from someone who hasn't seen the movie and who probably won't be able to go to a theater to see a movie like this for quite some time. You and you're a, I can't even tell if you're just lagging. Some Judas might be lagging in and out of the Sorry, yeah, yeah. It's you know what it's doing, and I'm just trying to ignore it, but every three minutes it's lagging out for like five seconds and it catches up. So I I missed what you just said. All right. Well, doesn't matter. We gotta move along. We're moving on because I want <laughs> you I want your opinion on this thing I'm gonna do. Um, let's go like this. Oh yeah, here's me on top and you on bottom. Okay, that's the best way to do this. No, don't like that. What's a good way to go about this here? <laughs> there we go. Hey, there we hey, go. Hi, now, I wanted to show you. Now, I was speaking in the chat to friend of the show, a uh, rhodium maiden, mm -hmm. and she dinged me with a puke emoji because oh, of no. this opinion. Now, now it's Rod it was man. a re it was a woman event, so I don't know if this is just I should just disregard throw her entire essence in the trash. But I'm going to get your opinion. Just uh, let me just share the screen here. Share the screen. I'm going to show you this, and you give me your initial reaction of this. So here we go. This mm. is, for the folks, for the listening, this is truffle-infused hot sauce. Now, do you see this as something loathsome or perhaps something... Uh, interesting. I mean, I can attack it if you want me. I can always find a reason. Go, go with your gut. My gut, my gut is I fucking I wouldn't pay that for it, but I'd buy it on sale. I did buy it on sale. You did? Yes, I bought it on sale, and it's very, very good. Yeah, I mean, I and love, I love truffles. I love, I love black garlic. I love hot sauce. Like, why not? And the packaging is actually decent. It's a little bit expensive for sauce, just because I'm poor. So. I'll tell you what I did. Went to Winners, picked it up on the cheap. Oh, oh Winners! When Dimes is in the Winners sauce aisle. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. You know how I... many sauces we've got at Winners? <laughs> how Jesus. Many? Is it a lot? It's a lot. I. I'd probably we buy more sauce. We buy so much like fucking queso at Winners. Like what the fuck? Nice. <laughs> I love to hear it because here's the for the single guys out there. You get yourself a wife. 
get yourself a little ball and chain. You're going to be going to winners. Yeah. Women love. Also, if you're single and you want to find wife material, get yourself to winners. You're going to find all kinds. Because here's the, 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 the good type of single girl you want is the one who's going to be looking for deals on pillows for her own damn self. That's right. You you snatch her up. Let, actually, let me look at the chat here. I see uh, Sensor Don saying some shit. Okay. Quick on Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte wrote a letter to his wife, Josephine, in which he wrote to her, don't wash for three days to spice up the reunion. Yes, the man liked a fetid crotch. He liked he, he liked a, a real swamp down there. And I, I have to believe that that is what Damn. caused this movie. Hmm. Now, for those who are going to go see it, you got you to gotta tell me if there is that letter writing scene somewhere in there. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> We're going to, okay, so today we'll get to the main topic. I don't want to dilly dally around too much because people are 50-50 are on dilly dallying. Uh, we're going to get to the real meat and potatoes of this. So this is a documentary. It's a short one. It's only around 25 minutes, but knowing how we talk and knowing how we do our tangents, we're probably going to pad it out quite a bit, <clears throat> but it's... um. Produced by Al Jazeera, it is. It came out fairly recently, three months ago, uh, but that's the reason that, that I decided to, we can watch it uh, because it's the most recently produced documentary I think uh, related to this topic about Canadian residential schools and the, and the like. Mm. So, um, and it's produced by Al Jazeera. Now, let me ask you this: What are our feelings on Al? Jazeera? Where do we stand on Al Jazeera? Because you know, I remember we kind of got wind of them, all of us back in the post 9-11 world and we we were kind of if you're anti-government you were kind of into al jazeera because it seemed yeah. like an edgy new sure. thing and for some reason they were like partnering just just like russia today like you'll see some guy I you know say, show up on there yep I so was what just do we feel say, about al jazeera i was just gonna say if you like if you like rt and you like al jazeera the only thing is to just remember al jazeera hates you rt hates you now their whole mo is to attack you know the, the 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 zionist government the global american empire so to the extent that they're doing that we appreciate them and sometimes we like to quote their articles but don't ever mistake that for like the fucking guys going on about palestine right now like oh we should be brothers with the palestinians no palestinians want you to die just as much as they hate jews so now you would hope the palestinians win and then likewise you appreciate al jazeera's reporting because it it, it does actually tell the truth sometimes, um, but they're not our friends. So, <laughs> yeah, because so, I've thought about Al Jazeera for a long time. I'm like, then I see this documentary and I just thought, what's your game? What, what's your game with this? I don't, I don't mm. know what are you trying to get across. I, I'm not trying to say it's a psyop or anything, but I'm, I always remember like, oh, yeah, this is just that weird Muslim news station <laughs> that gets British people to produce this because you'll hear that it's like a British accent. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I think of this anyway. Uh, but we, we don't like this. The the status of our feelings on this is we're not fans of this. But um, we've been following this story about uh, the residential schools and the alleged uh, mass graves on the properties. And we've talked about this on the show now and again. We'll bring up a story. We'll talk about it. But I wanted to dedicate an entire episode of this because... Um, I want this to be pretty public facing and I, I kind of want to gather up a lot of our takes into one thing. And I, I think rather than spread off, spread out in a bunch of articles that like this is this, cause this is like a propaganda piece, as you'll see, this is a short film, uh, which provides no evidence. It's all very emotional, but I think we can get a lot of our takes in this one uh, portal to hell. Anyway, so we're going to get started. Um, and I don't know if you've watched this. I, I I watched parts of it, but I didn't watch the entire thing. So yes, a lot yeah. of this is going to be fresh. <clears throat> and so for people who are new to the stream, uh, leave uh, comments. We'll talk about it. Uh, super chat. Send those through. Um, also, before we get going, I totally forgot about this. A uh, bit of show news. I'm going to put this up on the screen. We have officially launched the hats. The hats that we've been talking about, uh, we got uh, the shipment in, we got all the outgoing stuff figured out, we have all the designs finalized. Um, it's a limited run of these trucker hats with uh, leather patches sewn into them, created 
by a partner of the show, Mike of Paul. Uh, he created them. And, you know, go to this site, go to goodsuffer.com. Good suffer, suffer with a V instead of a U. Um, act fast because the inventory is limited. It's an artisan bespoke product for us. Um, we're going to try and refill them and expand this as uh, we need to. But for now, there's just the limited ones we got. So head over yeah. there and, and see. There's two different designs, three different colors for each. Uh, you're going to love it. Um, Mike is but, Mike is in the Odyssey chat right now. So I said thank you to Mike. And also, uh, who else said something? Uh, and on commando says, does Dimes know he sounds like he's in a tin can? Okay, do I sound like a tin can? Okay, I, like you know, I was saying you had you had like basement vibe. I think that's what it is. Okay, is it actually basement? Because you had, you had said, oh, you sound like you're in a concrete room. Yeah, you sound but like I, you're. I, well, maybe it's a tin room. I don't know. How am I supposed to know these fucking things? I can't see it. I shouldn't sound like I'm in a tin. It's room, all right. Don't though. be self conscious. You're fine. Run the show. We're good. Okay. Not this is gonna bug me. Okay. Here's, <laughs> that's oh, yeah, here's, why I brought it up. <laughs> here's Mike Paul going. Hey, like hey. A girl, with a girl with many Y's. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're going to get going. Let's just get, let's get to it. And if there's any issues, the audio, let me know, but we'll get started here. So right away, uh, let's just pause here. <laughs> First two seconds. First two seconds. Again, for the folks at home, let's describe what we are seeing here. This appears to be uh, the intro to the video. We're looking at, uh, at the end ending of Steven Spielberg's AI. I, you know what? I was going to say that. I was, <laughs> it is. We're, we're looking at an M.C. Escher painting in brutalist concrete uh, populated by what I have to assume is what Arabs think white people look like. Like they, they I think this is what they think America is. Um, and there's these night. It looks like a, a tool video. All right. Let's let's keep going here. What an odd intro. The discovery of hundreds of suspected unmarked graves at a former residential school for indigenous children in Canada made headlines in 2021. But while many around the world... Let's just stop there as well uh, to set this up for people. So again, this was recorded or produced rather three months ago. Uh, and there was a lot of talk and a lot of uh, media speculation yeah. about these mass graves that were allegedly found on these residential schools. And the residential schools, as, as this uh, video will explain, were where we sent Aboriginal Indians uh, children to be to teach them math, and apparently that broke their spirits. Um, now, and there was supposedly a lot of mass graves there. Um, as it turns out, there were no mass graves of children. And there's a couple interesting points in this video that I did see that we're going to find interesting. But I'm just going to show people um, a couple of examples here. So um, looking at Hold on here. Like here's one here from the New York Post. Uh, biggest fake news story in Canada, Kamloops mass grave debunked by academics. Uh, one year ago today, the leaders of British Columbia First Nation banned to, I'm not, there's going to be a lot of Aboriginal names in here. I'm going to say none of them. How about that? Mm -hmm. uh, announced the discovery of a mass grave of more than 200 Indigenous children detected at a residential school in British Columbia. Um, long story short, they thought they found these mass graves and they didn't. The alleged burial ground, which is said to include 215 bodies, some as young as three years old, was located with the help of ground penetrating radar. Now, just if you can, you had a, a take on ground penetrating radar on yeah. a previous episode. Could you summarize your feelings on that? I will, I'll dig into it a little bit more because nobody threw it back at me. And I'm kind of hoping that I'm wrong because I like the idea of ground penetrate. I like the idea that it's like Superman vision and you can like, you can see titties three rooms over and you can tell cup size from there and what she ate for breakfast. But the point is you That's fucking That's how they can't. sold it. You can't. That's it's, how... you know, radar, like they said ground penetrating radar. Look, look, for example, what's normal fucking radar, right? You fire it out <laughs> in the air and it sees a bird and that's a little beep. And you see a 747, and that's a big beep. So it can barely tell at a few kilometers between a bird and a fucking jet. And you're telling me that shooting it through the earth, which it's not meant to do because it reflects off of physical objects, shooting it through the earth, it can tell you that there are bodies and not, for example, rocks or pockets of air 
or old lead pipes. The point is it cannot. And anybody who knows anything about it, anything about it will tell you that ground penetrating radar tells you as this is what it tells you. It tells you that the point where you see a, a Oh damn it. I think it might cut out there. I hope it's just me that's Lip. doing this. You're looking at an inconsistency. It's all right. And this is the thing where they'll do the ground penetrating radar and it'll show anomalies and they just say, oh, those are bodies. Then they dig it up. It turns out to be rocks, turns out to be junk, turns out to be anything other than bodies. They're just assuming that. And also here's a line here, but he and others question the highly charged narrative about Kamloops school that includes children being murdered and buried in what some past school <clears throat> attendees say was an apple orchard. So this is just one example of one. Uh, let's look at another um, here's a big one. No human remains found two years after claims of mass graves in Canada. This is a separate one entirely. Different band, different area. Uh, in Pine Creek First Nation, the so-called anomalies were first detected using ground penetrating radar. Uh, I don't like to use the word hoax because it's too strong, but there are also too many falsehoods circulating about this issue with no evidence. Um, so basically, every time they dig this up, they find nothing. And yeah. I found pulled three different stories from three different areas across Canada that said they're all fucking fake. And, and then go figure that that's been happening. And now every time that we push and we're like, look, we'll even pay for it if you just let us dig up the graves. They're like, no, this is now a sacred Indian burial ground. You can't disturb them. So we're going to keep complaining about it. But you're not allowed to exhume the bodies. Because of, like they, the point is they know, they fucking obviously know that if we were to dig it up, you're just going to find rocks and old pieces of pipe. Yeah, and I would like to set it up with this because you're going to see some things in this video that once you understand the background and once you can see what we're showing you right now, a lot of the comments that these individuals make will sound very quizzical. Like, for example, here, uh, no evidence of human remains found beneath church at Pine Creek Residential School site. This is the CBC. This was published April 18, 2023. This, is, this part here, a lot of people will skip past this, but this is interesting. 21 child deaths recorded at the school, which operated from 1890 to 1969. And this is something that always sticks with me because, like, people talk about there are these mass graves with uncounted, unknown children. However, as you'll see in the video, these residential schools were very bureaucratic. They were officially endorsed by the government. Many were in operation up until... 2010 some of them so couldn't you just check the records and see how many children died and where they were buried yeah. this idea that there's so many lost time, like it's not like we're going back to the 1100s or back to the bronze age yeah. we're trying to look at old clay tablets like they have records so this idea that there's just like off the books dead kids has never really been addressed as far mm -hmm. as i'm concerned um because you can see like 21 mm -hmm. 21 deaths were recorded at the school and let me just say this, and I've made, this is just a wild speculation on my part. 21 deaths in 1890 where kids died from, you know, some swan virus that we don't have anymore. You know what I mean? Like kids, this is why you had to have 26 kids because yeah. you, you let five of them outside, three of them come back yeah, later yeah. that afternoon. So the idea that there was kids dying at schools generally at the time I can believe that. Like, maybe that number is actually pretty low. I mean, that sounds bad because maybe, you know, we're talking about dead kids here. That's very morbid. That's very grotesque. However, that seems like a relatively low number for the amount of time that it was open. Anyway, yeah. But also, I, you no, know what? No, no I, evidence of human remains down, which means that those 21 kids who died there were, they alerted their parents. And I assume the bodies were given to the parents because they're not there. Right. Sorry, continue. Oh, so you were saying it's a very interesting point, like whether or not you believe in or whatever, at least if you believe in medicine generally, you got to understand that infant mortality, child mortality was much higher and like, say, pre-war. So pre-war, even if you had a school of 100 kids, I don't think it'd be crazy, especially with the younger kids ages, you know, four, five, six. That those kids, you might have a death every two years or even a death a year if there was a bad flu season, right? This is before even like acetaminophen. This is before anti-inflammatories. This is before all kinds of stuff. So, and then the fact that they recorded the death kind of makes it seem a little odd that they quote unquote covered it up because it's fucking recorded. 
And then the, you can't find the body. Well, what do we do with the bodies now? Well, usually we bury them somewhere that isn't the playground. We bury them somewhere that's a not it's a non <coughs> place, right? So like they're not going to be in the fucking playground. Like none of this none of this makes a conspiracy theory. It just is like if you actually look at this evidence, the evidence that there is with open eyes, it just seems like a the tragedy of childhood mortality in the pre-war years. That's all. Yeah. This is. Also, I don't want people to get it twisted that we're saying no children died at these residential schools Probably because lots of died. myself and Judas are survivors of public schools. And you go to public school anywhere in Canada and America, you're going to have a couple of kids who die. Everybody's pregnant, by the way. I, I almost died. You remember that? Were you there? Had, you I almost died. I'm covered. <laughs> if you meet me, I'll dox myself. I'm fucking covered in scars yeah. from almost dying in high school. He, he actually, I forgot you almost did die. Oh uh, man, that was, that was, <laughs> man, I don't even want to tell the story because the, the details of that story will dox itself. Let's yeah. just say uh, you went through a window and you're covered in lacerations. Yes, I am. To this also, day. I don't want you to think that people think you're disfigured. You're not disfigured. No, I have um, to point out the scars now. It's been 20 years, so. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, yeah, and like half the people are pregnant. Everyone, the cars are pregnant even. A doy doy doy. Um, should have had a sound effect lined up for that. <laughs> Otherwise, that would have landed. You know, what I was gonna. I the one uh, sound effect I wanted to get, I didn't get in time, was from like the Call of Duty. The bomb has been planted. Oh yes. <laughs> um, anyway, but yeah. So the idea that people are dying in schools right now. So I'm not trying to say that zero kids died there. Anyway, enough of a tangent. Let's keep going. I was shocked by the news. Canada's indigenous people were not. Let's take a stop right here, okay? So just describe <laughs> what we're looking at here. And I'm going to be a bit mean right now. I'm going to be a bit of a stinker. Um, for the folks at home, what we're looking at is, I would describe as standard Aboriginal physiognomy. Uh, everyone, like, here's the thing. It's just like Aborigines in Australia. Like, you never see a young one. Yeah. It's very difficult. They're all 60 or they're like 45 and look 60. Let me just say this. Again, completely uncalled for. There's no reason for me to say this. Every, he's here. He's beating a drum. All their stuff looks like arts and crafts. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Like, we're going to see a lot of examples of Aboriginal art. And the reason I'm so heated on this is I've seen this my entire life. Yeah. Every muse You go to the Museum of Canadian History right now in Ottawa, our nation's capital. Half of it is Aboriginal bullshit. And half of it is just their tribal paintings that they that they made yesterday. And I, I see all these drums, and it's just a bunch of stuff. It's a bunch of stuff tied together. And I don't know. I, maybe this is too politically incorrect. I'm sick of pretending that this stuff doesn't look goofy. Yeah. Yeah. I might have burned any of the goodwill for people, like, peeking their head over the window. Like, what are these guys up to in here? I'm just saying their drums look like ass. They look right. dumb. You know what it is? It looks silly. <laughs> looks like a bunch of silly stuff yeah I, hey hold on before you continue i was thinking about what you just said that you never see young ones right and i like you know i've I've got a bunch of my family and i know i i have a buddy here where i live who owns a company who is an aboriginal guy his wife's aboriginal and they own a, an, a larger engineering company and they're fairly wealthy like they're decent people but they just look like spanish like you wouldn't know they're Aboriginal unless they tell mm. you. And what I'm thinking is, I'm wondering if this the this fucking dude you see here on the screen, this acid addled guy banging on a arts and crafts drum. I wonder if it's like their fallback, where there's more of them than you know, but the ones that fuck up their life and are retarded and are grifters, it's so easy for them to just do this. And then it's funny because it it actually reinforces our opinion of them that they're all a bunch of fucking idiots because I, I know quite a few of them that pass as essentially pass as essentially Spanish or like Romanian or something. I don't know. They don't look quite look white, but most of them are like 60% white. Like this fucking guy isn't pure abo. Look at his skin. This guy's 70% white at least. Right. Humiliation. Yes, it's true. <laughs> no, no, but, but it's true. And um, we'll get to this in the course of the video, but most of the advocates you're going to see are just like white ladies. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like what anyway. Uh, we got a, a comment here from Oros Post. Um, uh, Judas talk about big boss Brahman Vivek Ramaswamy. Have you heard the news about this? Did, did you see the thing I posted 
in the chat? No, I haven't. I'm not in the chat that much lately. All right. So uh, you're not nearly online enough. Uh, basically, yeah. it was a post, I believe, on Reddit by just an Indian guy who was diving into the history of Vivek. Vivek, who's out there saying that the great replacement theory is real. Every Indian in politics right now is going after like white nationalist talking points and people don't know how to feel about it. But people are going through this guy's history because we don't know anything about castes. We don't know anything about the cultural makeup of India. But this Indian guy was saying, it's like, well, he says he's from this area, but his last name isn't a last name from that area. So I was asking some people, they essentially traced this guy, Vivek, to being a Tamil Brahmin which is like a, a specific type of Brahmin caste who are like supposedly assholes or something. I don't know. But it, mm -hmm. basically this guy is like lying about his background in some sense. Um, but the Indian guy, he gave a bit of grim news. I think he was kind of like a lib talking to other libs. And he was saying that, you know, as more Indians show up, you might want to know a thing or two about Indian castes, which is true, but also I don't want to have to know this. I already spent so long learning about Muslims. Anyone who was yeah. alive during 9-11 knows more about Muslims than anything. But, it's but it's ridiculous out, how much though, the average right? person knows. That was so helpful. I mean, being able to... Okay, I think he cut out again. <laughs> being able to enter... Oh, nope, not at all. We totally... I should let him keep going. I hope no, it's I'm, just me. I'm alone. here. It's, yeah, it's I'm done. <laughs> we got an LOL from Orr's post. That might be in reference to that. Probably. But I think, you know what? I, I think, oh, and also all Brahma and whatever that, there's going to be a lot of words I cannot pronounce in this. Shatria. I, I was going to say about Vivek. The, the thing with Vivek is he's doing the thing that all Indian guys do. It's the, hello, my, my very good big dick friend. Here, I have a very good discount for you. He knows that the tide is turning towards the right. We're going to have a right wing resurgence, and he's pulling out all the fucking stops. He's not a he's not a right winger. He's a fucking Indian. They don't even know what politics is. Okay, <laughs> he just he just knows that he can suck more dick on the right than the left right now, and that's what he's doing. He's fucking. He's this is the purest expression. If you're gonna write the purest expression of Indian politics, this is what it is. It's exactly what this fucking guy's doing. All right, we're getting off onto India. This is good Sorry. stuff. Thank you, Oros Post, for derailing us into Indian stuff. <laughs> oh, by the way, Oros Post, once again, yelling yes, queen, at what Judas is saying right now. Uh, the, the praise for Judas is, of course, a veiled attack at me, as yes. we all know, yes. which is annoying, of course, to everybody. That's why I cultivate it. All right, let's keep going. I'm not going to make fun of this guy anymore. They have long known about the damage these schools, designed to assimilate and strip indigenous children of their identity, have caused to their communities. People in Power examines the long-term consequences of the residential school system. Let me also just say this. I didn't notice this as I was watching the beginning before. There's like a permanent overlay effect on this entire thing. And there's like, this is very, this is like easy easy like videographer guy stuff like this just throw this over top to make it look professional there's ashes as an overlay too there's a lot of cheap effects over oh, yeah. this yeah um and i didn't notice that until just now but i'm going to be keeping an eye open for all the cheap effects of this and what's actually been done to right that historical wrong here we go with the nightmare world again <laughs> We're watching stop motion monsters walk around. This is, this is the Giacometti. What's that? It's Giacometti. It's not the mon they're not monsters. This is just, this is literally just a Giac. Okay, there's this sculpture, the sculptor from the mid century, no, it's mid 1930s, named Alberto Giacometti, famous sculptor. He did like iron. Anyway, this is this Giacometti man. I just realized it because it's the feet give it away. So they've taken a model of Giacometti. They just fucking ripped it and then they're copying it out. That's how cheap they fucking are. It's 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 silly. It's cheap. All right. Awkward. Let's keep going through this. This this puzzling opening. What's this called? The show is called People and OK, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> a room by J Jerome Edlin for this. In schoolyards, churchyards, 
and graveyards across Canada, a grim search is underway. Investigators are using ground-penetrating radar technology to look for evidence of what is now widely acknowledged as genocide. Let me just pause here again. Like, I don't know what I was expecting, but the quality of the machinery looks like just something anybody could do. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, th this just seems very rinky-dink. Right. It was, it was it was kind of shitty to even compare it to actual radar. I said it be, in the previous show, it's a fish finder. Like, if you have a boat, you have one of these on the front of your boat, and it's just pinging, like, 10 meters down to see if there's a fucking fish. And even then, it could be a fish, or it could be a leaf, or it could be a rock. And part of the art of using a fish finder is, is interpreting the different little black dots that you see. And f there's only ever fish and rock. That's all there is, right? So... Hey, hey, look, get a little of this guy, this Judas guy talking when he's looking for fish underwater. Kill yourself. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> God. What a great big fucking fool he is. All right, go ahead. I humbly stand before you to offer. Then there's this fucking slut. Oh, this guy. I bet you could put any. What we're looking at here is Justin <laughs> Trudeau, <laughs> pre divorce. You know, there is no official <laughs> symbol of Aboriginal, so you could just have any old feathery yep. stuff, right? Because when you're an American politician, you have to wear a very specific American flag <laughs> that they get shipped in from Israel. This, like, he could just have made this at home. Could he wear could he wear a big like Valvoline jacket like a NASCAR driver and say that it's <laughs> I'm gonna say this. I'm actually pissed off that he didn't come out in a headdress to this. Yes, that would be cool. All right, let's let's see what this this guy's gotta say long overdue apology a genocide perpetrated by the white settlers who founded this country against the indigenous population who've lived here for more than 12,000 years i don't get why they're allowed to call us white and we can't say red yeah if you're gonna call us white we get to call them red that should be we used to fair. Call them red. yeah you think this is what we call indian giving by the way mm-hmm also it's like gen i don't want this is going to sound a bit too grotesque i'm sure but you know, it's the worst <clears throat> genocide ever, yet they're still here. Yet there's so many of them. We're, and that's actually a point we'll get to Worst later, as too. in least effective, yeah. Oh, hold on. We got a, from Oris Post here. Uh, Trudeau will definitely have a podcast when he's out of office. Could you imagine yeah, that? He's going to. That's a, a, absolutely true. Everybody has a podcast. You know what's funny? But there's a peak. I remember reading The Onion like 15 years ago, and they were making fun of how everyone has a podcast. And then somehow it's like everyone, everyone times five has a podcast now. It just never stops. All right, here we go. We lost our families. We lost our siblings, our communities. Many lost their pride. The government of Canada now recognizes that it was wrong to forcibly remove children from their homes. And we apologize for having done this. Also, this is another thing that within my lifetime, I'm pretty sure I've heard three of these apologies. It's something we do every like five years. It's and and, it, and it's years. great because Trudeau is like, this is the first long overdue apologies. Like, I know. Dumb fuck. We apologize every year. And Here's then, Harper. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and also for people who don't live in Canada, um, where I am in Ontario, I can't speak to Alberta or Manitoba or anywhere else. But if you're at any sort of public events, anything that is government operated, uh, before whatever the presentation or speaker is, they get up there and deliver a little speech that says, like, we recognize that this is the traditional land of whatever the tribe it is, and we are just on their land. So, like, imagine that. Imagine being yeah. a people where every which, single official thing, you have to admit that I don't belong here. Which, by the way, this is dumb Gen X white people who don't know anything about our history and don't understand that we went in with guns and bayonets and kicked the living shit out of these people, conquered their asses, and then we made a treaty with them. The treaty wasn't for them. It was for us that we promised that we wouldn't rape them anymore. And we won. We fucking won. And now they have the gall 100 years later to come back and be like, you're on our land, though. No, bitch, this is our land. We took it with steel and sword and, and fucking gunpowder. Well, well, also and it, it's our fucking land, okay? The other thing that happened was that that is true. And then after we established these colonies and these provinces, the reason the Indian Act exists, if you really look at the history, was 
And imagine this from the Indians' perspective. Here are this, these settlers, these new people, and they come with all this technology. Remember, Aboriginals did not even have a written language up until I believe around the late 1990s. And that was a government project that created a written language. And a lot of people might be unaware of why that's significant. Just listen to the past few episodes of the show. We get into we get into written language and things like that. It's a big fucking deal if you were just an oral tradition type people. Um, so, but you see these settlers come in and, you know, maybe they conquer you, but they said, you know what, as a deal, we want what you've got. We want access to the technology. There's no way you're going to come in and provide all this free education, provide all these, these services that we don't get a cut of. That's actually what led to the residential schools to begin with. And it's why so many residential schools stayed open for so long. Because and they'll get to this in the video by saying the last one closed in 2010 and they were everywhere. It's like yeah, because that was the only school for a lot of the idea of a residential school was we can't you live so far out we can't get you to come to the schools in the cities and towns. So we'll build a fucking school close to you like midway through and then you, we send you there. But the funny thing is, and we've covered this in uh, previous articles, uh, one uncomfortable truth that they uncovered during these residential schools was it wasn't always Aboriginals. There was a lot of other types of immigrants that went there because you come to Canada, you go to school, you got to learn English. So if you're Italian, you're Polish, you're Ukrainian, you got to you lose your culture because you got to learn English and French, but it's certainly English. And so a lot of these residential schools was only half Aboriginal. It was whoever lived in that residential area. So it could be any fucking immigrant group that was there. So oftentimes it was like, yeah, if you look through the student roles, it's like half Italians and Poles and like, you know, Quaker refugees from America and shit like that. So like, but that hurts their narrative that, that these residential schools were just for residential people, residential groups, and that there was a rule that, okay, we're going to take the kids and send them over here. And we'll get to that in a second. I don't want to spend too long on this, but, oh, here's one from Oros Post. Uh, which is relevant. I lived on the res for a few months in the Dakotas and they were more degenerate, compulsive, unemployed liars than when I lived in the hood. We have to get some stories from that one day. We'll get Oro's post on the show to talk about that. I was ashamed of who I was. I was ashamed of my family. I was ashamed of my people. Again, this is just like a, a white guy. I don't know. Like he's, he, he's, I don't know. Orange is not his color. He looks like a peach. It's a peach <laughs> colored man. <laughs> Today, we recognize that this policy of assimilation was wrong, has caused great harm, and has no place in our country. In May 2021, Canadians were shocked at the discovery of 215 suspected unmarked graves at the site of a former state-sponsored residential school in British Columbia. There are mass graves. The fact remains that there's our ancestors under the... So two things to say here. Uh, one, there aren't. We, we haven't found them. There aren't mass graves. That's just a lie. And he's just like, we haven't found them yet. Well, why do you think there are? And he, this guy specifically never establishes why he thinks they're mass graves. I've never heard that story. And I, you'd think that would be the first story. Here, here's what I found. So there's this uh, director named Alex Gibney. I believe it's Alex Gibney. Yeah, he's a documentarian. He did like Taxi to the Dark Side, uh, Enron, Smartest Guys in the Room. I'm pretty sure that's him. Anyway, usually when a Western-minded man does a documentary or something like this, it starts with a case study. What is, there's no case study for this. You know what I mean? It's not like we have a story of these mothers who lost their children and they don't know where they are and they just never came home and they are in search of them and we're going to chase it right up to the ladder of the catholic church right there is no case study that triggered this they're just certain that there's mass graves i haven't even heard that there's there's families looking for these kids and you'll speak they'll speak to families like they'll speak to all these people and it's like you, you there's no documents of like a, 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 a missing children even it's just they have this idea that there's missing children but anyway yeah i've never even heard of it Yep. Also, this guy, all I'm going to say is interest in physiognomy. Yep. I was going to point that out too. But Very, yeah. Now, I looked this guy up. I tried to do an early life. Couldn't find anything. Just a very interesting face uh, for mm -hmm. Christopher Ash. Hey, whoa, whoa, hey. Oh, I'm what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And to get them home, we need resources. And we need the will of the federal government. 
<laughs> In the weeks and months that followed, more potential unmarked graves were found across the country. So when uh, the revelations came up about the children in unmarked graves, um, it was shocking to many Canadians. Yeah, it was almost unbelievable. Now, back to faces here for a second. Again, this is one of the many just white ladies you're going to see who are purporting to be Aboriginal. Now, what do you call this type of face? This is a very red flag of a woman face. I'm not calling her ugly or anything, but what it's almost like well, sk squinting from below the eyes. Yeah, she's got, you look at the lines on her face. She's constantly having throughout her life an expression of consternation and disgust. Not a happy lady. Um, but also her physiognomy is Aboriginal. Like she definitely is, has a little bit of red blood in her. But um, like my my aunt is pure blood. And I can tell you she looks much more, and she's a sweetheart and I love her, but she, she looks much more similar to an ass, uh, uh, what's it called? Aboriginal from Australia than this woman. This woman is at least three quarters white. So very troubling glasses. I just, I don't like her. Yeah, eyes. There's something... She's got the, like the, 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 the <laughs> fuck. What's the movie? <laughs> the Keanu Reeves movie with the, oh man, John, oh, Wick. You think of the, John, the John Wick say, librarian glasses. Yeah. I was going to say John Wick has a joke, but you were talking about John Wick. It was talking about John Wick. No, because like you know, he's raped. They do the goofy thing in the, in the continental hotel where they have all of these women in like the short black blouses and dyed hair and the vintage glasses. But some of them are like 70. <laughs> like that's her. <laughs> it's going to be funny when all the horrors grow up. Yeah. Well, this is, that's what you're looking at right now. Oh, by the way, we have Judas's literal wife here saying Mardi Gras necklace. Anyway, yes. we're spending too long <laughs> complaining you. about people's faces and bodies. <laughs> And uh, they could, they were driven by emotion. Uh, but And they were sometimes surprised that we didn't have that same reaction. And the reason was because we've known for decades. So just to come back to that, you've known for decades, but did nothing about it. Like there's no evidence of any movement up until Interesting. someone else. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like there, there was nothing, no rumblings about this. It's, it, she speaks of it like, oh yeah, I knew that. I knew that. I heard about that before you did. Yeah, like that's a that's a very so shitty like, girl thing to say. You have a problem for apparently literally a hundred years. We come along and pay start paying attention to your problem, and only then do you say, "Oh yeah, I knew I had that problem." It's like the language thing. It's like we we create a federal program to literally create a language for you because you don't even have one—a written language, sorry, a written alphabet. And you're like, oh, yeah, I mean, of course we need that. I mean, <laughs> we've been. Uh, <laughs> it's your fault we don't have one, actually. So, so imagine that. Here's what happened. Um, someone is actually uh, triggered by a speaker at the UN who caused this whole wave of interest. Then all these Aboriginals say, oh, yeah, he's talking about me. I, I, we lost our family there. They're in a mass grave over there. That's where that's where they are. Then they look for the mass grave, find there's no mass grave there. And they still say, oh, it must have been somewhere else. No, 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 no. We caught you in a lie. And I feel like that's missed in the, all of these reports where they actually didn't find a mass grave. No, that means you were lying. That means yep. you were lying the whole fucking time. And that yep. lie, just to, again, set this up, I should have said this at the start, that lie led to upwards of 80 churches in Canada being burned. Yeah. Uh, Catholic churches, any church, really, because they, they was just an excuse <clears throat> to go hog wild on Christians. Now, maybe some people are Christians and don't care, or maybe they have their own gripes about uh, the Catholic church. But I'm like, that... That was just a green light for them to attack something that is right, Western, colonial, whatever it might be. Also, and there's been no, yeah. no, no, no one held to account for that. That's it's, lost. It's another good time to bring up. We just want to talk about racial animus and where we're coming from as white Canadians that grew up around Aboriginals. Maybe this isn't true in the States. I'm not sure if it is. But we have this constant lie that's told all the time about um, Aboriginal women always go missing and they go missing. And we know that it's just old white boys in trucks that are going up and abducting them, raping them and killing them and putting them in the ditch. The thing is the Aboriginal women always go missing on reserves. And we know that um, Aboriginal men are fucking drunkards and rapists. And how do we know that? Because they also rape white women and those rapes are actually recorded. So if you look at the criminal statistics in Canada where they're available, there's actually way more, especially rape, but violent crime of Aboriginals against whites way more than there is of whites against aboriginals and that's essentially always been the case throughout the history of our fucking country so like 
we uh, we get to be a little bit uh, mm, <laughs> uh, frustrated <laughs> about this shit. And of course, what we're looking at right now for people who are curious is this appears to be the Philippines. Uh, we're looking it's at literally the Philippines. <laughs> Uh, Spanish American War, where and then people standing. No context given to these images, by the way. We're seeing yeah, like yeah. old black and white photographs. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll continue on. But just to that point, actually, um, yeah, we discussed that in a previous episode. For people who are wondering, that's the second uh, story that has circulated a lot in Canada: missing and murdered Aboriginal women, Indigenous women. Again, the implication is that they're targeted based on their race. But if you look into the data, all of these cold cases lead right to reserves. Because, as we all know, most murders are done by people who know the victim. So it's probably yep. an, an ex-boyfriend. It is a family member. It is an enemy of some kind. It's the same there as anywhere. But they, they want you to auto-complete that to, to be as if like there's these white people hunting aboriginal women or they, they'll say like oh they just here's the, tr the trail of tears they call it there's a trail of tears a highway of tears where these missing and murdered aboriginal women they go missing right um, so you're telling me they go missing walking along this like desolate highway yeah probably <laughs> they probably like fall in a fucking ditch like you're walking through the desert it's like who's hunting people in this desert i don't know maybe a bunch of bitches get lost like if you ever like walk down the uh, a highway at night in the in the pitch black anyway that that's all speculation anyway oh also here we go uh fazing precise latitude and longitude yeah, is a product of white supremacy over <laughs> verish is indigenous knowledge <laughs> oh and and there's yeah anyway we'll continue more than 130 residential schools operated across canada the aim was to isolate the children from the influence of their home families, traditions and cultures, and to assimilate them into the dominant culture. We know that thousands of children died. And in look at this. Let's just look at that. There's a lot going on here with this woman. Again, for the folks at home, I'm going to describe what you're looking at here. I, I've known girls that look exactly like this. So we're looking at what we might call a fish mouth. Yep. You're looking at, you're yep. looking at um, my face isn't actually oh, that fat dude. earrings. Mm -hmm. uh, my face actually isn't that fat. Glasses. Yep, the whole kit. Big sleeve tattoo. Uh, bangs. Bangs on a woman. I tell you what, you see women with bangs, you go bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't kill them, but you might cross to the other side of the street. What did you see that woman? I tell you what you do. Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you putting this on YouTube, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about Ava Jewell, assistant professor, Toronto Metropolitan University. Now, I'll whoa, tell you whoa, what right now. Ava Jewell? Like, Ava Jewell? Yeah. Jewel. Uh, just, just, it looks to be just a regular ass bitch. Uh, <laughs> Toronto Metropolitan University. And that sounds like a straight up made up school. Mm -hmm. You yeah, are not. Yeah. An, uh, we, we spent a long time in Toronto. Never heard of that place. Uh Let's see here. Let's keep going. In residential schools, sterilization happened en masse to Indigenous women. Based. We know that there were outright mass murders. They're taking children Never. away. Again, none of this is cited, by the way. Like, not even once. There's outright mass. Like, um, okay, what? What do you mean there's a mass murder? Yeah, you know, no, sure. just we the, really inter always be suspicious. By the way, even if you're reading an article, always be suspicious of emotional things that are breezed past. Away from their parents and into a community where you're trying to transform them that's genocidal it is also just for the record as a tangent um they are trying to transform them in a way that you are transforming an oral tradition into a written linguistic tradition um yeah. i actually i'm on their side with this like it, it is earth shattering if you are from a primarily oral tradition to learn how to read and write you know there was this um i forget where i was reading it but they said one of the difficulties of teaching a lot of these african tribes uh, mathematics is because you know people think about oh they just don't have the word for it as if a word is just a thing you can invent and give it to them no a, a word implies an understanding a utility of understanding so if you lack the word to describe something that means you lack that concept and that means you lack the psychological machinery to even Correct. approach that concept so that means that you know you you cannot teach math to a lot of these tribes because you need to teach them counting 
Mm-hmm. Which they is... they know counting because they but they don't know counting like you know counting. Right. It's such a powerful concept. They, they, you just said it. The idea that by teaching people words and concepts, you're actually putting like little machines in their brain that allow them to think in new and different ways. And when you're when you're talking about people that have only ever counted verbally, that they can't like. You, it's. I think it's fair to say, especially if you're talking about low IQ Africans in tribes, they cannot think. They are honestly closer to animals than to people because they don't even have the mental machinery to conceptualize the idea, not even math, but like the idea of oh, the idea of honesty, right? The idea of doing the thing that you said you were going to do rather than words just being like colorful you are things. Bound that you to say. your word, you're bound right. to it. There like, are that's so a whole many concepts. concepts. And they and the frustrating thing now, which is really common in Canada, is they want to make all of these differences like um, cultural idiosyncrasies. It's like, no, they are functionally, practically, measurably superior and inferior to each other. Like there is a hierarchy of goodness as it, you know, and, and, and this, is, this. this is a problem that the Western man had for a long time, because I think a lot of the what emerged from the Enlightenment was this idea that we could just. Uh, bequeath these thoughts and ideas to people who just hadn't been exposed to them. And that really was uh, it, every sort of imperialism that we did. We realized that to civilize these people essentially meant breaking them down, shattering their world and rebuilding them, which is a very brutal thing to do, you know, to if you want to do it right. So you have to ask yourself, like, do you want to actually destroy these cultures? And I can believe that at the time, they did not ascertain how difficult it would be. So in a sense, I do believe that there's a lot of them that, you know, were felt like they're ripped away from their culture. But again, their culture was arts and crafts. And they talk about like, you know, if I was in my community, we would learn how to hunt. Look, you can learn how to catch a fish pretty fucking fast, Moonstone. Like, you know, <laughs> but we're also trying to teach you how to write your fucking name, which apparently takes seven years. Yeah. And you you die trying. Oh, that's bad. You, you die. I'm not. I'm just being mean. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be grotesque. You don't want to be mean. All right, let's. Okay, I let's don't be, stop being mean. Yeah, if I could say something like "write your name" or "die trying." <laughs> Hell yeah! All right, let's go. Genocide. Yeah, uh, my view, clear and simple. It meets the United Nations definition of genocide, so I call it genocide. You can always tell their emotion when they say Webster's defines and all that sort of shit. Look at her uh, smirk too. Look at that look, fucking smirk. Yeah, like I, this is what the UN said. So checkmate. Yeah. How about checkmate you? Have, you have looks you like ever a fucking wig? I know you have, but I'm going to rhetorically ask: Have you ever met somebody who is genuinely upset and indignant and righteously angry about something? Because I've, I've I've been that person, and I've met many people in that situation, and they don't use that face. That's not the face of righteous indignation and anger, and uh, and you know, that's the face of oh, I figured out how the game works. I'm going to get paid this week. That's what mm. that face is. This is a woman who, in her mind, is saying mm, mahjong. No, you, <laughs> all our fuck. friends are Chinese. Yeah, you don't get to mash on me, bitch. All right, let's go. <laughs> In October 2022, parliamentarians unanimously passed a motion acknowledging a genocide had taken place. Also, quick stop here. I don't know if I can prove this. That sounds like a brown man doing a British accent. There's a very specific type of British accent that like immigrants end up adopting. Now, I don't know if I'm right. I'm not going to look it up. So you can go fuck yourself. But what do you think about that? Uh, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> On Canadian soil, Member of Parliament Leah Gazan said, what happened in residential schools was a genocide. I'm grateful to parliamentarians who unanimously passed my motion, recognizing the truth of Canada's history. I think they're just filming that guy going up the stairs to be mean. He's he's not built for the stairs, man. This there's no reason for that B-roll footage. That was just bullying straight up. That's what I would do. If I was but you know what? This. You know they probably took so much B-roll, and that was the best one. Just imagine what the uh, other ones were. Oh look at oh. Jesus Can we get a picture really of you eating some fries? <laughs> How does this man eat a meal? Are we? Gonna... <laughs> Scope of residential schools. 
This wasn't a one-off thing. This is pan-national, my friends. This goes from Halifax to Vancouver, 140 of them. This one closed down in 1997. Yeah. This one closed down in 2003. This isn't ancient history. It's not in our rear view mirror. Well, actually, if it is history, it is in your rear view mirror, but I'm not going to split hairs on that. But yeah, this is what I was saying. Like they were open for a long, long time. And it sounds like most of them weren't even a problem. And here's the thing. I'm not going to go into this too much in here because it's not going to be like a research stream, but I took the time and I read through a few PDFs that were linked in some of these articles about actual stories that came out of these residential schools. And one actually stood out where they pulled around like 500 stu former students from one residential school and 24% of them said they had a negative experience and 34% said they had a positive experience. So there you go. in a couple of residential schools, the ones that were pulled, and this is buried deep in the PDF, you'd have to go looking for it and not just read yeah. the abstract. It sounded like a lot of, not saying that they're all the same, obviously, but it seemed like there there is enough examples where nothing untoward was happening and they were just like country schools. Also, while we're asking kids, uh, you and I went to a rural public school. How about you go and ask the current generation of like grade grades of uh, sevens in a rural public school in our hometown and whether they enjoy the school and feel they are treated fairly, you're going <laughs> to get like 80% of them saying, fuck the police. <laughs> so <laughs> You're going to have them saying like, fuck colonists too. Like, <laughs> these days. Like, uh, yeah, that's actually a good point. If you think of any rural residential school, I mean, half the school is probably smoking. Um, all right, let's keep going. This is very present. More than 150,000 children were forcibly taken from their homes between the 1880s and the late 1990s and placed in distant boarding schools. Also, school just a little asterisk there. By distant, sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. Like sometimes these residential schools were like within walking distance of where the kids were taken from. It all depends. Sometimes the kids were shipped away if you lived in a really, really remote a northern place but it wasn't always the case that they were just like shipped across the country or something yeah run by different churches though the majority were operated by the catholic church so far the official number of children who died at the schools is 4120 but it's believed many more lost their lives in the government funded education system we as a society were all complicit. We supported the system that did this. We're now boarding rows 30 to 40. We're traveling from coast to Oh, by the way, I forgot to set this up before. So I've got control of the video. And Judas, if you want to jump in and pause it for any reason, I was thinking maybe we could come up with, with a code word or some kind of phrase. Um, I was thinking of pardon me. So if you'd like to stop the video, maybe you just say pardon me. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Coast to uncover how and why these schools existed, and to ask if, decades after the residential school system shuttered its doors, the Canadian government is doing enough to support First Nations children, their families, and Indigenous communities overall. There is this whole uh, broad sweeping inequality that really acts as a prison for First Nations children and families, and really gets in the way of them being able to recover from the trauma of residential schools. To get into and use the Look at this guy. Life expectancy Damn. is 15 years less for Indigenous Canadians. Suicide rates are five times higher. And Indigenous communities have higher rates of alcoholism, drug addiction, and homelessness. Yeah, and for those who are not exposed to this narrative, if you're American or European, perhaps, like they blame everything on residential schools and the last, what they call the lasting trauma of residential schools. So that is everything. And I, the PDF I was reading, um, maybe I can, I'll pull it up later if I want to. Um, they had a huge long list of every social problem that is pegged to residential schools, including incest, because it turns out there's a big incest problem on um, reserves. Um, there's alcoholism, there's ch general child abuse being their kids. And it made me wonder, um, and again, I'd have to go back further into the, the literature and whatnot to look at this, but uh, that might be one of the reasons they took the kids to begin with. <laughs> like they might've gone to these communities and say like, okay, these kids are 
in trouble. We're actually going to try and save these kids. Again, that's just speculation on my part, but maybe because it turns out that the parents didn't really miss the kids from the sounds yeah. of it. Could be. The legacy of genocide in Canada is felt every single day in every single Indigenous community. We see this in continued patterns of addiction and substance abuse. Again, just a, another heavy set white lady who, and keep an eye on her because it's very interesting the way she is trying to police her own language as she's saying this. Like she's got like a terrified look in her eyes that she's going to say the wrong thing. Just something I uh, picked up on. Yeah. Use of child welfare and of ongoing issues imposed by the government. Even that Ish ish issues. That's an mm, odd thing. Issues. <laughs> like, like it sounds bureaucratic. <laughs> like why did you, that's an odd thing to say. Oh man. Because it's almost like they don't want to reveal what the issues are. It, this whole narrative relies on you not understanding what the full story is here. Yeah. One in six First Nations uh, communities do not have clean drinking water. It means that you'll get 30 to 50 percent less in education funding. Maybe your kid's going to go to a mold infested school uh, in child. Again, like, nigga, we went to a school. <laughs> we all like did. anyone who's gone I'm to a asking. public school, there's dynamite in the Look, textbooks. That That is a problem, but that problem has nothing to do with Aboriginal. All right, cut out again a little bit there. I'm just going to describe what we're looking at here. Um, they for, just don't know enough about are, the are, rest of the nation see, outside uh, of the audio version. It looks like they made mailboxes with oars that say truth, wisdom, and love. Again, just a, a bunch of silly stuff and a bunch yeah. of hats, uh, which look like a, a white woman's gardening hat. <laughs> <clears throat> Child welfare. We had studies saying that it was 30% less than everyone else was getting, even though the high need was higher because of residential schools. <laughs> the, res <laughs> the need is higher at these schools because of residential schools. Well, why? Why do you need more funding because of residential schools? You'll just say things like that, which, which don't yeah. make any sense. Yeah. There are more children in the child welfare system now than there were at the height of the residential schools. Now that this, I saw this and I had to pause and think about that Let, let's go back a bit even though the high need was higher because of residential schools there are more children in the child welfare system <clears throat> now than there were at the height of the residential schools which is like i want to unpack that for a second there's a yeah, lot that's going important on. that's important okay so there's more kids in the system now the, the same system by the way yeah, the, the same system shut that the made schools down, but it's still the federal government's responsibility to take care of these fucking kids. Why? What's going on with the families? Tell us. Tell us. Yeah. And, and that's what it, it's the same system doing the exact same thing, essentially. But there's more now than it was before. So it's worse now during than during residential schools. That seems to be what it's implying. Right. You you fucking people, you get free university and college. You don't pay any taxes. You can open businesses that don't follow business regulations the way the rest of us do. You have a leg up over white Canadians in every fucking possible way. You literally are a protected class of people. And yet most of you are so fucking drunk that we have to take your children away or else you will beat them and rape them. Like, don't make this our problem. This isn't our problem. We're You're lucky that we're taking care of your kids and not just going with guns again like we did a hundred years ago and fucking wiping you out you fucking animals okay, ah! okay here oh whoa whoa oh, yeah. i'm sorry i was so <laughs> fucking mad. No, no, also just to add on to that uh anecdote that when i was in college for the second time i worked at the college in a position and one of the departments i was adjacent to and knew people from was sort of the aboriginal department there and i'd heard stories internally that they have so many bursaries and so many grants and free money, effectively free money for Aboriginal kids every year to go to school for free. And that's the case in every college and every university in Ontario. And they're just never taken. No one comes to claim the money most of the time. And it just sits there. So no one's taking free school. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, behold, just a LMFAO Judas Grunt Rar. All right, yeah. so we'll keep continuing here. 
My suspicion is that Canada will not release this data that these calls to action are calling for because it will illuminate their liability and the discrimination that they have been perpetuating. Let me just say this again, I'm, I'm pausing this a lot, but it's because we've covered this before. And we have a lot of information to give. Uh, I can say with full confidence that if the Canadian government is withholding any information regarding residential schools or the legacy and whatnot, um, it's information that will make you look bad. If yep. they're trying to protect yes. you, you from yourselves, that they probably do have information that no children died and that ev like just like missing and murdered Aboriginal women, you're all doing it. If they're keeping things secret, it's for your benefit. Because remember, this is the same government that flagellates itself during every opening ceremony saying, we're so sorry, we don't belong here. This is your land. I'm sorry. Don't be mad. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah, the government of Canada doesn't want to count what it could be held accountable for. Uh -huh. St. Mary's <laughs> Residential School in Mission, British Columbia. Opened in 1863, this was the longest continuously operating residential school in Western Canada. Today it's the site of extensive searches using ground penetrating radar. Literally the architecture tells a significant part of the narrative about the attitude, the mental constructs, and the minds of the people that created these institutions and how they were designed, built, and implemented. In now, this is a straight up white guy. Yeah. He's talking like a white guy. He's talking about psychological constructs. He's talking about architecture. He's talking about a lot of stuff we find interesting. Now, this guy is in a prison right now because he knows they keep looking for these masquerades and they haven't found anything. He's got to go out there every day in his fucking <laughs> orange shirt and do maple leaf. And you know what? He's probably like a lot of these libs. They believe in what they're saying. They're they're environmentalists. They believe in, you know, making amends for things. This is the type of guy. If you look at his face, white guy, David Shape, solid lib name. This is a guy who just likes making amends. Yeah. He likes clear in the air, whatever it might be. He's got a good chin, but it all came out of his skull. It did. <laughs> it did. Um, here we go. They were administered, and for what reasons? Isolation, separation, control. Um, it's all about the the intent to do away with Indigenous peoples. Dr. David Sheppy is leading the team surveying the site of this former residential school. Yeah, I mean that, that's something that always sort of. Uh, Shocks me a little bit about these. So many of these schools have their own cemetery in them. The, the... Okay, here's a part that I remember seeing before. Pay attention to this. We might watch this a couple of times, but watch this. Talk about the cemetery on the grounds. This is a cemetery. It's a complicated situation because it's currently active. It's not just for children. Um, it's unclear overall who exactly was buried there over time. Uh, but we do know that many of the markers are missing and then so part of our job okay let, let's, let's watch that again. children um it's unclear overall who exactly was buried there over time see this is what i want to really focus on as well is that people will look at these residential schools and see oh there's a cemetery there that must be for children and half the time it was a multi-use cemetery um, a lot of times, because the residential school would have just been probably the only grounds in the area, a lot of yes. people were buried yes. there. Yes. Ran, so, like, at every residential school you see cemeteries, it's probably, like, adults of various races born there, uh, so, buried there as well. There's a, I'll see if I can do this without lagging out. There, there's a big split left-right between the urban and the rural in Canada, like there is across North America. I challenge liberal urbanites to drive two hours in any direction out of your city of choice and look at how the federal world the federal government operates in these small towns because you uh, even the provincial government in smaller towns right you will have the fire station and the and the police station and the hospital are all one unit called an emergency provincial government unit or something along those lines they all have different names and it's all the same three guys doing the same shit and then right beside it there will be a dmv and a graveyard like it's all this is not uncommon the idea, and this, it's just, again, liberal urbanites who are used to everything being compartmentalized and centralized. It's totally fucking normal to have city hall, a school, and a graveyard literally in the same lot in a, in a small town. Like in an actual, not a small town of 10,000 people, a small town of 300 
which is like most of them a hundred years ago. So again, this is not weird. This isn't weird at all. Fuck. <laughs> it would seem weird to like just a British guy, a British guy working for Al Jazeera who showed up. Yeah. who's probably never left the urban center. Yep. Uh, but we do know that many of the markers are missing. And then so part of our job is to do our best to sort out what we know about burials in the cemetery. Which is a good job. People should be doing that. Like people should generally be going through cemeteries and finding who's buried there. So maybe that's how he gets. I, I don't. Dates. I like, don't hate this guy. Like this guy's got a job, and like you said, he's kind of in. I think if you look at him, he is in crisis. He feels bad. I don't think he has wrestled with why he feels bad. He probably one day will realize the reason that he feels so uncomfortable right now is because he is on the 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 receiving end of this shit. Not because he actually is a villain. He probably feels like maybe he's a villain, but he's going to figure it out one day. But he's actually just doing his fucking job. So, yeah. Um, hold on. We got another one from Oro's post here. Just want to point out that the guy's earlobes are attached to his neck. Bad, bad physiognomy. Now, how do you feel about that, first of all? Actually, you know, yeah, the entire lobe is attached to his head, not just the bottom. Oh, no. Like an unfinished clone. The whole thing. Damn. I've never seen that before. How do you get that? You're born with he that, was, I guess. He was created by AI. The bad ears. Now, now, the AI would give him, like, perfect ears, but have something flying out no, of his No, you're mouth. just saying at the beginning that the AI fucks up the ears, like the fingers. I, I, you, I don't fucking know the shit I said at the beginning of this. <laughs> you said that an hour ago. God damn it. Oh, hey, guess what? <laughs> Right now, Dr. Sheppy and his team are just one of dozens across Canada who are trying to piece together the grim legacy of Canada's residential school system. The work is slow and painstaking. We look at archival information. We are looking at oral historical information. We're looking at all sorts of documents. You can't actually look at oral historical information, by the way. Just, <laughs> just, just, just a little, just a little niggling thing there. <laughs> just had to put that out. YouTube, that was niggling. That's a valid word. Mm -hmm. Tree information. We're looking at information that can come from the land itself through the application of technologies like drones and LIDAR mapping and ground penetrating radar. We, we, we approach this in a very holistic manner. Can we pause for a sec? The search at same. LIDAR mapping. He's talking about LIDAR mapping. LIDAR yes. mapping is just a way of creating a, th a 3D model of a physical space. So, like, you LIDAR map the graveyard, it's going to show you the location of the headstones and the trees. <laughs> That's so funny that he's spending all this money like, to make a 3D model of why? what's on screen right why? now, which is a cemetery. This is, and, uh, like, again, I was kind of defending the guy a minute ago, but, like, for fuck's sake, this is the whole thing with the government, is they pull every resource that's available to them because they have a, if you lose it, you, you, like, a lose a use it or lose it budget, right? So they pull everything in, but it's like you could have just gone with your phone and taken pictures of the headstones, like a, like a contract tractor would do and mark up the distance between them on with your finger or a stylus and then the job's done and you don't have to spend twenty thousand dollars for fucking lidar scanning jesus christ get his ass saint mary's is still ongoing but regardless of what is found it's clear that these buildings and the people who worked in them have devastated this community. They kind of set themselves oh up. It's like, regardless of what happened, we can tell it's devastating. No, don't step away from that. <laughs> now that you <laughs> found out nothing happened here, say, but but still, obviously. <laughs> Fucking guy. By the way, we're looking at a very nice looking gazebo here right now. This is the equivalent of the swimming pools at Auschwitz. I want to draw I want to draw attention to a comment by Fonzang who says, should have used hard R mapping. Instead. Should have used hard R mapping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Base. That's LIDAR, that's so fucking good. Good job. <laughs> this guy. Why I make art goes way back. When I was in residential school, grade one, I already like started being abused since I got there. So by April, <clears throat> um, it came Easter time and their and their culture. So the, Oh, we gotta draw some rabbits. <laughs> so I went and I drew a rabbit. And everybody just liked my drawing so much. I, at that age, at six years old, I decided, oh, I'm gonna be an artist. Okay, so for people who might have gotten tripped up there, he's telling a story about his terrible time in residential schools, about how supportive they were towards his drawing. <laughs> this is such a weird story. 
it's such a first of all it's like in their culture they had to draw rabbits like no that's what they do for kids like yeah. it's, not, it's just any kid hey draw up a fucking <laughs> easter bunny shit. it's like black saying they hate white food because all they've ever had is prison food <laughs> like oh white people love to draw rabbits now it's something we do for children but you didn't finish seventh grade so you wouldn't know what happens afterwards <laughs> he's like well apparently it's good enough that it set you on the career path you're on we, we like, literally helped you find your career and everyone you met there was supportive and said you were wonderful so Where's the abuse? I'm sorry. <laughs> Sounds to me like the white man is back, frankly. Yeah. Yep. At that age, I'm going to create beauty for the people to see. So, I'm sorry. I just love the fucking soundtrack here. Like, this is a soundtrack that you or I would pick as a bit for this. <laughs> yes, it is. It would be like picking a soundtrack where it's you and me going, hey, ho, hey, ho, hey, ho, ho, hey. Just making Indian noises. Like, you know, just put... Put a trap beat behind him. It would be more dignified. Sculptor Carl San was taken from his community when he was a small child. Okay, just pause here. For what we're looking at, um, and Judas, I'm asking for your opinion as a, a carpenter, a woodsman. What we're looking at is him using, he's carving something, uh, what looks to be a bug into the side of a log. Could you describe what we might be looking at here? Well, I mean, I look, I don't, I don't know. I'm assuming it's like a totem pole or some shit. I don't know what else you make out of a literal piece of firewood. Uh, but the, he's, <laughs> it's funny because he's using a Makita angle grinder with a shaping disc, uh, which is a very, I would not only is it a modern tool, it's like a prosumer um, zeitgeist tool for like YouTube carpenters. <laughs> so <laughs> nobody, nobody in industry uses these fucking shaping discs. It's for cool guys with YouTube channels. So. <laughs> and it's a beetle it looks like All yeah right. he says his experience at saint mary's residential school has shaped his entire life i got on a boat and all these kids were crying so hard man i i had no idea what was going on what i was getting into anyhow we got shipped off uh, you it's weird like just again keep pausing but i hear these stories about kids being taken and they didn't know why they were being taken i find that interesting and maybe it's just me dwelling too much on anecdotal evidence but it's like did your parents not tell you what was going on or did you just have shitty parents who didn't inform you and it's, it was like cps coming to take them child protective services yeah you know what i mean like that's what it sounds like like how are so many kids confused about what's going on the, the parents should have prepared them and well, so what do you think about that uh, yeah well definitely I mean, we can't, we just don't know. So here's a situation where us as white guys, we're going to have to say, look, there's just not enough information. So I don't know. And he's taking the, the side of, well, I do know. And let me tell you. But the truth is he wasn't there any more than we were there. Because when he was there, he was six. And you can't trust a fucking six-year-old with all the emotion of what went on. Like, look, if you asked my, if I, if I disappeared tomorrow and you asked my eldest daughter today, today's almost four. And you asked her 20 years from now what I was like. She's going to tell you some fucking tall tale because she never saw me again. You can't believe that shit. She's probably going to tell you I'm a horrible person because that one time I didn't bring her enough milk when I put her to bed. You know what I mean? So like you, this is bullshit. Why are we? <laughs> Cutting out. I like when he cuts out when he's his most passionate too. Um, oh, Judas. Sorry, you cut out there. Um, listening to what happened to him. I'm done. Sorry. Sorry, when you, could you also keep an eye on Odyssey? I can't really see the Odyssey chat. Have we gotten any chats or not a, uh, not super a whole chats? Lot. Uh, Rad Dad says it's state sponsored shame porn for the sake of globalism, which I agree with. Fair enough. All right. Off to residential school there in Mission City, there called St. Mary's. Then nighttime came and. There wasn't a good environment there. There was, there's the supervisors, the main guys there. They made us all line up to their, to their bedroom, and they took us all in one by one, sexually abusing us every night. Now I don't. Again, I'm no psychologist. Um, this sounds like a lie. Yeah, J just my gut because just the way he's telling the story, like 
you know, the main guys, they would just have us line up and they'd, uh, you know, abuse us. I'm like, <laughs> like if I, if you, I, you hear people tell these stories. If you go watch Soft White Underbelly, that's a great series. You'll, you'll meet people on that series who come from broken homes. They've been molested. Oftentimes they'll tell the story in a very specific way. They won't go into graphic t- detail, but they will give details. But they wouldn't say like the main guys just molested, sexually abused us. They get a bit more specific than that like I, maybe i'm wrong maybe this guy i hate to be no, wrong about something like this but i agree it, it, it just doesn't sound genuine to me every night all of us kids who had to do that that next day that same man he he cut my hair and we're sitting on this they call it the barber chair they caught it. And could smell them yeah. so it's bad. A fucking barber chair. I... God damn it. <laughs> they, they, as, the, as you say, the barber chair. chair. They had this chair in their culture. They call it the barber chair. And they would sit us in it and they would, would make, they'd cut our hair. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't want to sound like I'm just mixing and matching. This guy does have like, he sounds like a Filipino guy. Like if you listen to Filipino guys that age talk, he's like, yeah, man, you know, they cut my hair. Anyway. <laughs> it makes me sick if I smell chopped hair now (laughs) (laughs) he had to think about that oh man oh oh god man i love this documentary this is a good ass time (laughs) deprived of his language and culture subjected to hard labor and sexual abuse carl fell into alcoholism and drug abuse I didn't know, didn't know why um, I was drinking so much because I, I had really drowned <laughs> out what had happened. I did <laughs> again, the fucking chef's kiss here. I didn't know I was such a drunk. Then I remembered later I was molested. <laughs> like you, you didn't know. So that's the thing. Like I was drinking because I blocked it out. Well, people drink to block things out. If you had already blocked it out. You don't need to drink. That was just yeah. a thing you were doing. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got a comment here from James Nope. Uh, please do the Trayvon hoax next. I actually did have that one lined up. I think we might do that one next because that one's actually kind of there's some interesting stuff in that one. But just uh, here, James. Nope. Yeah, I, I got you. I love this guy. I would love it if this guy was just like behind the scenes making it up and getting a paycheck. Yeah. Because he's wearing a pink Floyd shirt, so maybe he just loves white people too. Why not? Well, this is what I'm saying. Like guys who can't look, he's a, a full time artist. Even a white full like these if you're a white guy and you're doing this kind of shit, you know, we had an art teacher who was this kind of guy, lived in the trailer. They do whatever they fucking can. They're they're not normal people, they're not integrated into society. So not only is he an aboriginal and say what you will. But even within the Aboriginal community, like there are Aboriginal guys who just have fucking jobs in factories. Not many of them, but they do. This guy's already a black sheep within within his own community, right? He's already a nut. So I mean, this is just the guy that you pick for the interview, I guess. By the way, we got a comment. We got a comment from White Well Being on uh, on Odyssey. Mostly all an organized grift on the standards, sympathy, and generosity of Canadians over the generations. Yeah, that's that's what's happening. That is true. Imagine us in a documentary like this, just doing Norm McDonald take. Like, yeah, I was molested. Just looking at the camera, smiling. I <laughs> <laughs> have oh, <yeah>, big time. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They uh, came out with their their the cock and the balls out, and I said, Ah, Jesus, Jesus, crow. <laughs> so, anyways, next day he takes me he's cutting my hair. And I, <laughs> Anyways, I feel sick now every time I see chopped that, that, hair. Now I can't cut my hair, and, and the joke has to be that he has cut hair. <laughs> <laughs> He's clearly just got a haircut. It would happen after his co-host asks him, hey, your hair looks good. Did you get a haircut? And then he tells that story about how he can't get a haircut. Oh, man, hold on. Let me just see if – can I find this clip? Oh, fuck. Hold on. Let me just quickly do this very quickly. Here okay. We go. Um, here. <laughs> what else is there to worry about? Well, we're in prison, you know, with prisoners. So what? So what? 
You know what prisoners do to each other all the time? No, what? You don't know? <laughs> no! Well, they... <laughs> if you're just listening, this won't be as funny. Hold on. I never heard of that. You never heard of that? How could you have never heard of that? That's what prisons are most famous for. <laughs> Here's Norm MacDonald <laughs> pulling up his pants. <laughs> you fellas have a lot of growing up to do, I'll tell you that. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Completely ridiculous. <laughs> you believe these characters? <laughs> way out of line, way out of line. <laughs> you mind to go to the warden about this. <laughs> you know what hurts the most is the, the lack of respect. You know? That's what hurts the most. <laughs> except for the except for the other thing. That hurts the most, but the lack of respect hurts the second most. <laughs> Weaver. Yeah. That there was an edit there where he was saying the anally rape. <laughs> he was anally raped, that hurt the most. <laughs> I don't know if anyone finds that as funny as I do. That's a clip from Dirty Work. All right. But to be in school, I'd have really drowned it out. Ah, here we go. More and more survivors are now speaking out about the abuses they endured at St. Mary's Residential School. You know, sadly, my research shows that there were pedophiles and physical abusers and sadistic, mentally cruel people, people who are mentally cruel in the school systems throughout the last 80, 90 years. It's very, very clear. Now, let me just, to their point, I'm not going to argue against that. I have no doubt that this is true because they were teachers. Yes. And we also have that in public school. Like, if you, if you got a bunch of... <laughs> It, forget about substitute <laughs> teachers. They're all rapists. I don't think we've brought this up yet, but we don't want to go so far against the aboriginals that we find ourselves supporting public school <laughs> teachers. <laughs> yeah, like, first of all, like if, if there's a hierarchy, maybe teachers at the top of people we want to you know uh, do something about. Then it's <laughs> pedophiles. That <laughs> Send all the teachers back to India. <laughs> well, if I had grown up in my community, I would have learned the language. I would have learned uh, how to hunt and fish and uh, learn about the ceremonies that we had in place. Do you regret that? Oh, heck yeah, because I can't teach my children all of those things. I was sexually abused. It wasn't by a priest or a brother, it was by one of them. First incident was by an older boy, and uh, the second yep. time was a, a boy similar to my age, but still didn't make it right anyway. This guy's probably, like, if this was the best guy they could find to do this, it's still not a great okay, story. Okay, so Sorry, continue. No, I was just saying, like, you're, you're essentially saying you were raped by other Aboriginal boys. Yeah. Which is, like, and we know this again because if you look at the crime statistics in Canada, yeah. Aboriginal men in that age are fucking rapists, largely. So it's now, not I, it's not surprising. Now, but prior to the show this afternoon, I was trying to chase down some data that wasn't included in any of the articles. Uh, one of the things I was trying to look for was you know to talk about predators, predators in the residential school system. Well, actually, how do they categorize predators? Um, do they include students as in that thing? Uh, and I found one uh, PDF. It was from the government of Canada, and they were including. Um, like teachers and also janitors, any school staff. And the one thing I couldn't chase down was, did they employ any Aboriginal people at these schools in even janitorial or groundskeeping or any sort of support staff role? Um, it's hard to track that down because, you know, I'm not trying to just poke holes in everything, but I'm also trying to think like, was there molestation happening from you know, like a janitor they hired from a neighboring tribe? Maybe it's an Aboriginal, but not from their tribe, you know, because this is like the caste system conflicts in India. Like there's there's op opposing tribes. There are to this day there's enemy right. tribes like right. maybe a child from one tribe was looked over by someone from another. I don't know. But what I found, I couldn't find that data recorded anywhere. That might be another dimension to it anyway. 
once again, just pure speculation, but still. I remember the awful loneliness, the um, feeling abandoned and um, mistreated like we were, we were nothing. We were really taught that we were stupid, um, ignorant, and that we had nothing to offer. Yeah, because it's true. Because well, it's fucking uh, objectively true. <laughs> you are taking the enlightened racist angle. I'm merely taking the angle of, yeah, you're a kid. Like, if you remember how you, you treated in high school. Well, that's what I mean. Like, at least if you have, an, a, like, a 12-year-old in a Canadian school in a, in a white, you know, corn farming town, the kid knows how to fucking read, at least. Right? The kid can spell his name. She probably was completely fucking illiterate and didn't even know how to tie her shoes because she wore birch bark moccasins. Like, yes, you are actually useless. You are so close to an animal that the only way we can integrate you into our society is by teaching you some shit. So shut the fuck up and learn how to write. Like, why are you mad about this? You're on television now. Obviously, you're literate. Everything that you have become as an adult, you owe to us. It's just fucking, it's the gall is insane. Get her. <laughs> it within society. And that's today, sadly, a lot of our people still suffer that. Because we were displaced, we had to, you know, our homes had to move. And then the children were taken. You know, a lot of them went to um, residential school. But in our community, a lot of people moved. See, okay, hold on. Let's rewind that a second. And then the children were taken. You know, a lot of them went to um, residential school. But in our community, a lot of people move. Well, that's interesting. You know, we could unpack that for a second. So the kids went to the residential school and their families just left. That's what it sounds like. So right. that the kids had no home to even go. Why did you leave? I don't. That, OK, let's keep watching. A lot of people moved away. They um, went to the States. They what? went to um, just to different places. What I? Why? I don't understand. I really don't understand that part. Like they took the kids, and so we just left. Do they not uh, understand the concept that like the kids when the kids are done school, they come back. Like, did they not get that? They went to another country. They went from Canada yeah. to the United States. That's savage. Like I'm pissed at the parents now. Because now you're wondering, like, well, why didn't any of these Aboriginal, like, you know, did they go after their kids? No. Not only did they not go after their kids, they Abandoned them as hard as they could, it sounds like. Yep. And so, it, it was a hardship for our people, you know, and like they said, that there, there weren't any children, so you lose your way, and a lot of drinking took place. All my family members, from the oldest to the youngest, I had five brothers and three sisters, and we were all alcoholics, and um, <laughs> my siblings they took all of their stories to the grave with them and they never did um, get out of alcoholism so that was one of the toughest things about trying to be a family because we didn't talk to each other about whatever happened to us so you don't even know yeah you know what i mean like again I, I hate to read between the lines on this guy because some of these guys just seem like they're caught as they're going to the fucking store yeah. Uh, we got a camera stuck in their face, but he's like, yeah, we, we never talked about what happened. So I'm like, maybe nothing happened. And they were just alcoholics. Yeah. I mean, the, I the, assum the assumption is if they were alcoholics, they must have been abused by a white person or maybe, you know, they're just alcoholics because you're like, you guys don't have ownership culturally over alcoholism. We all we all love alcoholism, but we deal with it. You know, we don't white people. When we become alcoholics, we don't have anybody to blame. So we go through programs and we talk within our family and then we get out of it and then we're better people. But you just blame everyone else. And then, uh, you know, yeah. And one thing is, it's like, you know, if you're white, you get alcoholism. Most of the, us get into it the same way. We decide that we want to get into writing 
and we start writing a little bit. And then some people stick with it and become really high function alcoholics. Some people just write a couple poems and just keep with the alcoholism. Yeah. Um, or, you know, you start watching a lot of Johnny Depp movies and you're thinking, well, this is a guy who drinks a lot. He's like a wine guy. Ooh, you know, uh, that that's typically the white story of alcoholism or you're Irish. A lot of our men just lost their way um, because of um, the abuses that happened with them. And um, all of that came out years later. And I say one thing. Yeah, I say one thing I really respect about this culture and other cultures, even what I respect about black culture is that oftentimes you hear the women really going to bat for the men. Like, look yeah. at her. She's going like, yeah, this is why they're they beat the shit out of us. <laughs> Like yeah. I don't, I don't know what that's like. She, you know, white guys wish I had that. She's also trying to play two games at once. She's playing the we all left the villages and moved to the U.S. because the children were never coming back. But also, the children came back, grew into adults, became alcoholics, and that's why they beat us. Okay, so which is it? Like you know, the children yeah. come back because your husband went to one of the schools and he beat you all the time because he was a fucking raging alcoholic. But also, your children went there. You assumed the children wouldn't come back, and so you moved to the U.S. So not only are you an alcoholic family, but you hate your own children. So, like, why are we taking care of you again? Why are we giving you federal tax dollars continuously? Well, first of all, look at all that good art in the background. Has everyone seen this? Damn. See all these tribal tattoos? You see these tramp stamps they got in frames? Yeah. That's what, you know, that's your tax dollars right there. That and her, I would, I'd describe this woman as wearing Christmas ornament earrings. Yeah. This is looks like something you would find in Chernobyl. It's called a shuttlecock. It, it, you know, she, she has shuttlecock yeah. earrings. Oh man, I'm we're just being mean guys. Today. <laughs> They're still living that, you know. And then we've lost so many of them in our own families. We all know of a relative that um, was abused, that um, from drinking or the drugs or suicide. In 2015, Canada elected Justin Trudeau as Prime Minister. Trudeau promised to reset the relationship with Canada's Indigenous communities and respect their rights. Trudeau promised us everything. He thought he could change everything. He thought he could make things better. And I was, yay, Trudeau, yay, I hope he wins. And yeah. Peter sitting beside me on the couch. <laughs> He won't be able to do anything. He listens to dusty old men in dusty old offices. It's cool to know that even in Aboriginal reserves, they have dumb bitches too. <laughs> Yay, Trudeau, he's going to make all my dreams come true. Come on, you're just talking about how everyone was raped by the government. <laughs> well, look, she's like 75%. <laughs> you fucking... You f like, why, like, if I, like, if I believed what they believed, I wouldn't vote. Yeah. You just got through your entire existence is based on not trusting the government. Yay, I hope he makes it. Oh my God. He said it was going to be a priority for him. And I think probably in his heart, that's what he thought was going to be his priority. Oh, but yeah. when he got into power, there are massive lobby groups. The same year, true. Notice the cut there. Like, what are the lobby? What do you mean no, lobby groups? So, the are there lobby groups that are lobbying against Aboriginals? There should be, but there aren't. There, there, there aren't. That's a strange thing. To, like, you'll notice they do things like that. Like, they just drop something in there, and you're supposed to go with it. Like, have you heard of that? Have you heard of a lobbying group that is against like, Aboriginal? You don't interests? understand that lobbying groups are there because of corporate interests that stand to profit from regulatory changes. Like, there's nobody who has a monetary interest in, like, fucking with aboriginals. There's no way to make money off of it. I don't I don't understand how you can have a what, what, what an odd thing to yeah. say. Trudeau was elected. The federal government received a report from an independent <clears throat> Truth and Reconciliation Commission, part of an agreement uh, to settle multiple lawsuits brought by former residential school students. It is important for Canadians to start somewhere and ultimately to create those tools of reconciliation that will live beyond today. I like his like, cartel blazer here. This, he's wearing a clothes that like a Sinaloa cartel guy would wear to a wedding. Yeah. Just like a bunch of embroidered regalia here. Anyway. 
Justice Murray Sinclair's report on the findings of the commission identified systemic failings and abuses that took place in the residential school system and put forward 94 calls to action to right its many wrongs. But eight years later, researchers say only 13 calls to action have been fulfilled. And we've been... It would nice, be nice to know what those were. Yes, it would. It would. But they just they don't explain what any of the 90-something were or which ones have been fulfilled. They just gave you a graphic there, and you're supposed to connect those dots. But what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a, a comment here from Vulp's Persona, my big fat creek wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, actually. I'm finding each year that there's been very minimal progress, that there's been almost a glacial pace. The federal government told me in a statement, Collaboration is ongoing across our government to identify the necessary steps to accelerate implementation, address systemic challenges hindering progress, and involve all partners. Indigenous people are poorer, sicker, less educated, more prone to alcoholism and drug abuse, more likely to be homeless, and die sooner than the rest of Canada's population. <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of losers. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't know, like, as a white guy, I'd be like, shh. They're, they're fatter, shorter, gayer, <laughs> stinkier farts, can't can't tell time right, <laughs> do, do in, into meth in not a cool yeah. way. Wear fanny packs on the front instead of the side, which is more stylish. We're not we're not talking about that. Don't put that in your movie. <laughs> you know, we are some of the poorest people in this country, and we actually should be the richest because. All of the resources oh, she, she's that are aboriginal from our land. Like she's claiming that she's aboriginal. I, I think I so. she was just a white bitch from an unknown university. <laughs> yeah. Bitch watch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, just that claim alone. Like, let's really just hover over that for a second. We're the poorest, but we should be the richest based on what? Just based on the resources that are ours. Well, I mean, that was the whole Trans Canada pipeline. You trying but, to fucking and also bully back that to out. treaty talk. They were yours, and then we almost exterminated you, and you begged us not to kill you all, and we made a deal. And the deal was, it's ours now. It's ours. It's not yours. So I get like, and the reason I keep bringing that up is because the whole point to a treaty is if you break the treaty, we go back to war, right? So if you yeah. want to fight us. I'm cool with that. There's way more of us now. We're better armed. We're healthier. Let's have another, let's have a civil war. Let's fight the aboriginals again. And let's, let's reset the fucking clock on it. Cause I'm sick of this shit. Them acting like, you know, that we're violating some fucking, no, we were, we magnanimously decided to not exterminate you. That's how we got here. Here we go. Let's keep going. Contribute incredible wealth to this country. We're traveling down through British Columbia to Victoria, where the province's Minister for Indigenous Affairs has granted us an interview. Murray Rankin is the man responsible for British Columbia's indigenous communities. You can't manage something if you don't measure it. Ah, I got it. That's him, right? Yeah. That's a bread. Yeah. Right? See yeah. something. Called it. <laughs> we have uh, metrics we've agreed upon with the First Nation leadership to manage and, dis and describe uh, specific actions that need to be taken. We're the only jurisdiction in North America to have approved the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act, which is our roadmap. So, I mean, speaking about metrics, though, um, I mean, unfortunately, indigenous communities kind of lead the way in, you know, the metrics such as rates of suicide, of alcoholism of, and sort of health outcomes. How big of a challenge is it going to be to uh, kind of get those metrics where they should be? It's an enormous challenge. And those negative metrics, if I can call it that, are all too true. And we all agree, agree as, a, as a society that we need to do much, much better. This is the legacy of colonialism. We all... I think he's got veneers. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, something yeah. something off about his mouth. I don't yeah. trust it. It could just be uh, could be a uh, dentures, to be honest. Yeah, you know what? It's a liar's mouth. Mm -hmm. I'll know that to be true. Also, he we're trying to take a, a brown diamond, which is a very brave. Uh, 
I'm very well, brave for the pin. Australia well, is that supposed to be orange? Like, is that you know what I mean? Like an off same orange color as his uh, his skin. We got a comment here from Murray's particular gate. Peculiar. Like a peculiar gate. To empower indigenous communities, self-determination, self-government. These are the things we think will make a difference. But we do have an enormous way to... Just by the way, they have all that, by the way. They have self-government. They have sovereignty. Like, for again, people who are unfamiliar with the lay of the land up here in Canada, the majority, I would say, reserves qualifies their own nations. That's why they're yeah. called First Nations, a great many of them. And this is why the uh, murders and the cold cases are so hard to solve, because the RCMP has to stop at their borders and deal with whatever fucking sheriff department they have on there, which are you know understaffed. They just can't solve it. Like You're not allowed to unilaterally just go into a lot of these areas and conduct an investigation. So if the if the res reservation is corrupt in any sort of way, like it, it's a black zone, you know, like you don't you can't go in there. So yeah. to say and, and also you're funneling money into there to the tune of billions of dollars a year. But, yeah, they, they have right now what a lot of people in our space will be champing at the bit for, which is like total <laughs> sovereignty on the interior of the country where the cops aren't allowed to go. Yeah. Um, and look what they've done to it. They just turn into a smoking fucking crater. This, this is a very Tim and Eric uh, frame I paused on right here, by the way. <laughs> to go. So imagine being an adult. In okay, wait, 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 wait. Just for the record, let's difference, see. But we do have an enormous way to go. We're looking at that woman again with the odd eyes. Let's just have a look here. She is not moving her arms when she is walking. So she doesn't know how to walk. She what does not. Time? She could not walk if you paid her <laughs> woman alert that is a that's a fucked up gate imagine being an adult in a community where there are no kids like that was that's what it looks like as a recent father you mean paradise you mean you, you mean uh you, you got guys being dudes yeah uh sounds like you know what like if, if they took my kids you what i would do uh, and they actually did take it i'd get together with my friends and go get them back if i didn't want them being taken you know what i mean and this was at a time in the 1800s where you actually could probably wage a war against the canadian government and win yeah like if you you and your buddies your warrior band got together and stormed the school you could probably take your fucking kids back there's like three rcmp guys who come after you one of them would be sir john a mcdonald himself yeah. Drunk as a skunk, fallen off his horse, but you could do it. They just didn't. Anyway, that's if we're hypothesizing what would it be, what it would be like, right? And imagine that happening for over 100 years to your kids. And then when they close, the government says, you know what? Um, we're going to give you less help than everybody else to overcome that legacy. And then when you fail to be able to look after the kids to the same standards as everybody else, we're going to send in child welfare and we're going to remove your kids again. So we are entering into the admission that they don't know how to take care of their kids. Yes. That's what we're witnessing here for people who are just tuning in. Yep. Yep. Uh, the experts are saying, well, of course they don't know how to take care of their kids. Yeah, for a lot of Americans, uh, this will sound very familiar to the liberals currently speaking of black Americans by saying like, well, of course they don't know how to go to school or pay for things with money. No one taught them. You know, it, like this is, we're just admitting that they do the thing that we thought, but it's not their fault. <laughs> Even at higher rates, that's what's happening. We're heading now to the Mohawk Institute in Brantford, Ontario. This was one of Canada's- of Mohawk. Anyone who's been to Mohawk territory here in Ontario, <laughs> this is what we're talking about, me and Julius, when we talk about driving through the reservation and it's all just gas stations and weed stores. <laughs> oldest and longest running residential schools. Opened in 1831, it was only closed in 1970. Also, one other thing that I was reading recently that the, the Mohawk name is like made up. Like that wasn't, uh, it was a kind of like an amalgamation of a bunch of different tribes. Like it was just like a, a name they made up. It's not like an official type of Indian or something like that. Like, and you see that law in Canada where they, they want to talk to the been here for thousands of years. A lot of these tribes immigrated from America in like the forties too. Yeah. And they're trying to act like they, they came up out of the ground like trees. 
This place was full of predators. So not only were these children taken from their community, not only were they put in a strange land with strange languages, they were put around some of the most reprehensible adults you can imagine. And I want to show you this room, not to glorify it, but to educate you guys on, on how horrible this place could be at sometimes. So. It says, don't enter. This is the boiler room, the infamous, infamous Mohawk Institute boiler room. When this thing was going, it would have been so loud. And the reason that this is a room of regret is because because of the sound, because it was away from the school, this is where a lot of the sexual abuse happened. Now, I just want to pause there and say that, look, I'm not trying to do an Auschwitz, you know, investigation here, but... You know, I had just heard a couple of guys saying that the abuse was out in the open in people's offices. You know, I'd heard that it, it was so systemic that they were just almost molesting kids out in the open. And now I hear that it's being done in a boiler room to cover it up. Now, there's no doubt that sexual abuse happened, of course, but I'm hearing conflicting stories about how systematized it was versus like just like a shitty janitor who got caught later. Anyway, that's just yeah. a, maybe a, just a nitpicky point. But anyway. Um. And again, when the children knew, when they were tapped on the shoulder and told to come here, it just must have been such an ominous feeling for them, knowing what was waiting ahead. So if you want to go, you can. I'm going to stay at the doorway. The Mohawk Institute is more than 4,000 kilometers away from St. Mary's School. But the stories here are depressingly similar. Like so many schools from coast to coast, this was an institution where neglect, abuse, and child labor were co When I hear the term residential school, it actually makes me angry. There was no learning going on. It was a work camp. Okay, fuck off. Yeah. Like, no, it was actually a school. Like, you don't need to, like... It was a work <laughs> camp. What did they produce? Was it a fucking coal mine? Like, were they stamping license plates? I mean, fuck off. Yeah, what, what they meant to say was they did what kids probably used to do, which is like sweep the floors and like clean up and shit. Like, what did they produce? Like license plates? Was it pillows? Uh, again, a thing that would be very illuminating to describe, but they just don't. A number of the staff were also predators. The Canadian government did a study and they wanted to know how many predators were throughout the 140 residential schools that existed. And the answer was close to 6,000. You know what? I actually think that was low. I think it's closer to 6 million. <laughs> <laughs> like I tried to actually look that up. That was one of the things I looked up. Um, like what's the amount of predators? And I saw it reported in an article, but I traced it down to what they were citing. And I couldn't find that number in there. And I couldn't find a lock on what they called a predator. Because you'll notice the language they're using right now. It's like, it's abuse, but it's also neglect. But it's also, you know, just like the entire thing is oppressive. So that's part of it too. Anyway, just so you know, I tried to track down some of these claims and I really couldn't find any hard data. Yeah, of course. Only 50 face justice. Why don't you knock them down? Uh, why did we all knock Auschwitz down? <laughs> and the reason is because it's a place of conscience. So if we are never to repeat the events of history, we, we must learn from them. So as part of that, they're doing ground penetrating radar <laughs> with the survivor secretariat. And that's what these grids are. Um, and that's happening at a lot of residential schools today. If Canada is sincere and genuine about reconciliation, help us bring our kids home. So part of that is by doing ground penetrating radar. The gut, we talked about the federal government, what they can do. Put some resources into this, right you're wrong. You know, all we're trying to do is get to the truth. And the truth is there weren't mass murdering sites, but there are mass graves, right? Oh, so there weren't mass murdering sites now. Cause I, I just heard it, it might've even been him or someone else who was saying there were mass murders. Anyway, just another a, a thing to circle back to. It's important when you watch these things to remember what was said 15 minutes ago as well. Because when you when you tell an emotional story, it, it oftentimes they will try and one up it the entire time. By the end of it, they will negate points they previously made. And so, in emotionally evocative stories like this, you will find them contradict themselves like a dozen times throughout. This isn't a long documentary, and they've already said a bunch of really contradictory things difference in that and 
however we want to peel that onion, the fact remains that there's our ancestors under the ground. And to get them home, we need resources and we need the will of the federal government, so. In 2016, Canada adopted the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, and it was enshrined into law in 2021. Once implemented, the declaration would give Indigenous people more control over their lands, greater protection of their language and culture, and more political representation. But the communities I talk to say the words of the politicians in Ottawa aren't backed up by concrete actions. I don't think there's any trust whatsoever. I don't think that there is good enough reason to have trust that Canada is coming to reconciliation in good faith, particularly when they have fought so hard against the most vulnerable members of our community, and that is children. I am always reflective on the fact it took an international news story which Kamloops became, to really spur the government to act. It took an international incident to remind the Aboriginals uh, miraculously that this even happened. Yeah. In March 2023, UN Special Rapporteur Jose Francisco Calitzai highlighted the appalling... That's like, a bunch, that's like three different ethnicities, at least, wrapped in one guy. <laughs> ...legacy of the residential school system on a visit to Canada. He called on the government to work more closely with Indigenous communities. Every ministry in our government has a piece of the action, and those actions are meaningful. What an interesting way to phrase that. Every they have a piece of the action. <laughs> huh. Tangible, they're concrete, they're not pie in the sky. They're things that we can measure and point to, which we hope will make a difference. As ground penetrating radar work. Oh, what's that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that? Ne oh, okay. Niggin. <laughs> oh, man. Continues all across this vast country. More uncomfortable truths about the residential school system will emerge. Those long threads of injustice from residential school, they continue to be woven forward in Canadian society to the detriment of First Nations children, but to the detriment of the Canadian country as well. This is a process that will take potentially decades. This is children, these are missing children, and a child's life is priceless. And these nations really want to bring these children home. When That's Canadian... such like a girl thing to say. I don't want to sound rude here, but it's like, those are just like, like female platitudes. Like every child is precious and these child children need to come home. And I think that's democracy. That's Canada, you know, like just nonsense. Yeah. Indians pay attention and demand action it happens. When they fall asleep, children die. All right, so that's it. That's the entire documentary right there. Uh, what'd you think? What, what, what do we think about this? Okay, so we talked at the beginning about Al Jazeera, and this is kind of what I'm talking about. They were pinning all of this on Justin Trudeau, like, it's, you know, the government has failed. It's all about the federal government. You know, it's the third act there. It's all about the federal government not doing enough because they're anti-Justin Trudeau, they're anti-liberal government. But the way that the barb that they're using is actually anti-Christianity, anti-white Canadians. And it's hilarious because they're using that to attack Trudeau. Trudeau's not a Christian and he hates white Canadians. So it's just, a, it's a fucking riot. It's an outsider trying to play a geopolitical game. That's how this shit is funded. It's trying just to have a look at the uh, comments here in a way that we can see them. It's cut off by my fucking thing here. I'm going to read some of the comments. It's just cut off by the overlay here. Maybe I can just turn it off for a second. Uh, backgrounds, overlay. All right. So we can just have a look at some of the comments because I believe it was... Who was saying that? Yep, it was Oros Poe saying... Uh, I wonder if the comments are skeptical of this BS. Let's have a look at some of the comments. Uh, great documentary. I always look forward to know more about the indigenous people from all around the world. Okay, so you're not from Canada, so you don't get the context of it. For indigenous people from all over the world, like I wonder if that would include white Europeans. Yeah. Don't let, let this somewhere. Don't let the simple things like the facts get in the way of your reporting, AJ. 
uh, got his ass. Uh, yep, here we go. Radar found 215 anomalies in the ground. After digging, no buys are found. Embarrassing from Tribune of the Plebs. Um, these are a lot of like kind of center right uh, type comments. You're noticing not a lot of irony, not a lot of slurs, which you would like to see. But whoever obviously produced this video at Al Jazeera isn't bothered about hypocrisy. You know, um, let's see what here. Uh, well, I don't know what that means. Do the best to restore educational services of Canada. Not even sure what that means. Um, but but, but, but we got, we've got a lot of people here calling out that they found nothing in the mass graves. Interesting. Um, a lot was left out. This guy, typical, who's this guy? <laughs> that Indian man. An Indian. He just says, thank you. <laughs> I, I love Indian comments. <clears throat> Um, so, oh, here, here, yeah, I didn't even switch over to the thing. Let me just show people here. And yeah, this is who we're talking about. <laughs> just an Indian guy with one subscriber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. This is why like, white people like having Indian people around, though, because they say thank you to just whatever. Yeah. Um, the U.S. is just as guilty. The last residential school closed in the U.S. in 1997. What the what? Uh, Somebody wants to know if they found any skeletons. Have they found any skeletons where, oh yeah, have they taken up any, have they taken up any skeletons or bones? Have any been identified by DNA and ancestry or similarly? Yeah. This is a, a rare base comment, which is phrased uh, incomprehensibly. Well, I don't know if I'd say it's rare. It's a, 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 one of the, a common occurrence of a retarded guy with a right wing take. It's kind of like the chat. <laughs> here's a canada and just puke emoji Thanks. and uh dollar sign tongue emoji greed oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this this guy puked and then got greedy um uh so european global conquest at shaking my i want to read i need a needle acne surgery in three months and a circumcision <laughs> in two months and a circumcision <laughs> in two months <laughs> What is what is happening? Fuck. And this is one of our guys. Yeah. This is one snuck under the border here. <laughs> um, uh, the U.S. still does this today to Native families. Pirate flag. Um, religion sucks from spaghetti policy with the the buddy Jesus thing. Murderer West. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So that's not a whole lot of comments. Not a whole lot of comments. How many views? Only 13,000 views. Not a lot of views. Um, yeah, it looks like it didn't make a lot of waves. And maybe that's typical for Al Jazeera. No, I'm seeing here on the right, they got 1 million views for this thing, 50,000 views. I don't know. I, I think this one just didn't take off maybe like they thought it would. Anywho. That let's get oh let's find a way to frame this where it doesn't look like shit. Here we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> Me up front, you at the bottom. There it is. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. All right, so that was a documentary. Uh, I think we covered a lot. You know, this has been going on for quite some time. Um, I think that summarized a lot of our, our takes on this. I would encourage people to look into this. Um, now, have we missed any super chats? Could you anything on Odyssey? um i can check let me know if there's anything on there well i'm look i'm having internet connectivity issues but i i don't see anything i don't see anything updated in the last 15 minutes okay cool all right so we got if anyone wants any stuff uh judas pick is sick thank you so if someone's complimenting you. your phone you made that yourself is that correct i literally lost the other one so i went on mid journey and made this while the show was loading <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and also, we got one comment from here. Uh, transmogrification from Bubblegut Dark Spit. Damn. All right. Uh, and also, I think this is one you want to get in. We got uh, Volvis Persona Technome. 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 Okay. That's you. That's you. Yep. Loving it. <laughs> Working with it. I'm here for it. All right. So I, I we'll just end that now. I think we got everything going on. Thank you, everyone, for... Uh, taking the time to spend the evening with us on this yeah, uh, Thursday night. 
I had a, a great time uh, for anyone who's interested. Of once again, I'll point to the uh, blood satellite trucker hats we have for sale on GoodSuffer.com. That suffer with a V instead of a U. Go there. Um, they're custom made by our uh, partner of the show, Mike of Paul. They're a great quality. We're handling everything in house. It's not print on demand stuff. So if you uh, like to support the show, you want a cool hat, then go there. Mm. All right. And uh, Jesus, thank you again for taking the time. And I'll hey, talk no to you soon. worries, buddy. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Right.